Hello my dear friends and welcome back to another Star Wars news update. In today's video we have some massive information for the Book of Boba Fett, we've got our first details for the Lando series, and we're also going to be talking about some casting news for Star Wars Ahsoka. As always my dear friends, before we dive into the news, please may I ask you to hit that big red subscribe button down below if you've not done so, and also be sure to smash that bell to be alerted every time that I post a new video. But without much further ado, and without any more jibber jabber, let's dive straight into the news. So we're going to begin with a very revealing interview given by Robert Rodriguez, and this is with The Hollywood Reporter, how the book of Boba Fett will shake up Star Wars. Needless to say, this is a very long interview, so I'm just going to break down all of the important points and the big takeaways. Over the last few hours on social media, whenever someone cites this article, they talk about the biggest point, which is that everything we've seen for the Book of Boba Fett so far, which is the trailers and teasers, are taken from the opening minutes of the episodes. In Robert Rodriguez's own words, he says, we can't use the second half of the first episode because it gives so much away. And he goes on to tease, things turn up that you don't expect. You see things we couldn't believe that we got to do. Every episode has big surprises. So while a lot of us have been worried that the series is only seven episodes long, it seems as though every single one has been jam-packed with surprises, to the point where they could only show the first few minutes of episodes in the trailers, because anything beyond that would be giving away something huge. And this article got Jordan Mason, the renowned leaker, to once again come out and reiterate just how big some of the characters that are going to appear are. Another massive point of this article is the idea of colours. Tomorrow Morrison described this show as very colourful in the past, and if you remember, I jokingly stated that I hope one of those colours is purple. While Robert Rodriguez also stated that revealing any colour in the show is going to be a spoiler, the article says Rodriguez had to adhere to certain Star Wars standards, however, which sometimes meant colouring inside the lines. There was nobody going these other rules, it was more like saying, this colour feels safe and we want it to feel more dangerous, so can we change it to this colour? And they go, these are the colours we've used, so let's try one of these out, but I can't reveal what. And when asked, so revealing a colour would be a spoiler, he replied, it will be evident when you see the show. Again, this whole idea of colour, we thought it was metaphorical in the past, but it seems as though he's teasing literal colours, which could be spoilers. Now, aside from literally colourful alien species, which could give away someone like Cad Bane, I think he might even be referring to lightsabers. I don't think they're going to be a massive part of this show, but with characters like Grogu, Luke Skywalker, and you know who potentially showing up, I think this is what he might be alluding to. To. Now, I know some people are going to disagree with me on this, but let's just see. Now, the article also confirms that Rodriguez wound up directing nearly half of the episodes himself, or as he puts it, three of the big ones. And believe it or not, my dear friends, he's also voicing two characters. One of them is the Athorian Crime Lord, who now has the name the mayor. So a few big reveals, but the article also makes a point that the producers like Dave Filoni and John Favreau are being very secretive. They say, as for the bounty hunter's future, it's never been clear whether Boba Fett is meant to be a limited or recurring series, and no surprise, the producers aren't saying anything. Rodriguez thinks there's a good chance this is only the beginning of Fett's return, though the director is currently signed for the debut season alone. And he finishes by saying something that Tomer Morrison has made clear over and over in the past, if people really love it, I'm sure they'd want to make more. And let's be real, I think this series is going to be a raging success. Maybe not on the level of The Mandalorian, but you never really know. We don't know what's in store in this series, everything is being kept heavily under wraps, and with only the first few minutes of episodes in the teasers and trailers, we don't know what we're going into. Now, one last thing that this article talks about is how Boba Fett is both a fan favourite, and on the other hand, you have Star Wars fans who don't really see the appeal of the character, and I think they knew this going into this series, and as such, they've probably catered the book of Boba Fett to both diehard Boba fans and also Star Wars fans in general, who will still get that authentic Star Wars flavour outside of just Boba and Fennec, even though it is going to be about Boba Fett's perspective. And this goes back to the cameos we spoke about, there are rumoured to be many of them in this show, and this article seems to tease that. I'm in the camp of diehard Boba Fett fans, 
He's one of my favorite characters, always has been. And as Dave Filoni says, Tomer Morrison adds an extra layer of intensity to the character. And what's really interesting is that people at Lucasfilm were not even told that the Book of Boba Fett was happening. Only the higher ups like Kathleen Kennedy knew, but apart from her, Robert Rodriguez, Dave Filoni and John Favreau, other Lucasfilm executives were not in the know. And I feel like at the beginning at least, that may have given them some more creative freedom because it means they could shape the series around something they wanted to see happen without too many voices whispering in their ears about what should or shouldn't be done. And as we just saw, Robert Rodriguez even says in his own words, he can't believe they got to do things that they did. And that gives me great hope of bigger risks in the series and also possibly some characters they never thought they would want to bring back. I'm super, super hyped. We're just one and a half weeks away from the show dropping on Disney+. Plus. And just to remind you guys, as I always do, I will be doing full episode breakdowns of every single episode, as well as my review, analysis, Easter eggs, and all of that jazz, just as I've done for The Bad Batch, The Mandalorian, and so on. So now, my dear Megalorians, we're going to move on and talk about the Lando series. This is one show we haven't spoken about at all on the channel, mainly because very little, if nothing at all, is known. Until now. Over on Reddit, a very generous user posted some photo snaps of the latest issue of TV Guide magazine, where they speak about all of the upcoming Star Wars series and give a synopsis for each. Now, I'm going to skip over the Book of Boba Fett, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and all of the ones we know about because there's nothing new. But what is interesting is the section about about the Mandalorian and also the Lando series. In the Mandalorian section, they kind of hint that Grogu and Din Djarin are not going to be apart for very long. And they also state something which we already knew, that Carl Weathers as Grief Karga and probably Giancarlo Esposito as Moff Gideon are going to return for season 3. But the wording about Din and Grogu not being apart for long is something most of us suspected. Now, on the Lando front, they say the following. Writer and producer Justin Simeon is in the early stages of developing this series, centred on the smooth-talking smuggler Lando Calrissian. Casting has yet to be announced for the show, but he was originally played by Billy D. Williams and most recently by Donald Glover in 2018's Solo, A Star Wars Story. And then, my dear friends, people noticed on Justin Simeon's website there is a little bit more, teasing that the Lando series is going to be centered around Lando looking for his home planet. Now, this point is pretty interesting because it's going to delve into Lando's past, where he's been and where he's going. They may as well have called it the Book of Lando, kind of like the Book of Boba Fett, where it's going to cover a large portion of his life. As such, the big question is, is it going to be Billy Dee Williams or is it going to be Donald Glover? My thinking is that it's going to be both. And a recent rumor has stated it's going to tie into Shadow of the Sith, the upcoming Star Wars book, which takes place between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens, so it could connect to the Mandalorian universe and the overarching story of Thrawn, now that it seems like they're looking to recreate Heir to the Empire. So now finally, my dear Megalorians, we're going to speak about the Ahsoka series because we have some new details about Ivana Sakno's character. If you remember, she's been cast as a new character and not one which we've seen before. According to the Illuminati, Ivana Sakno will be playing a character named Astrid who is described as striking and ferocious, a formidable mercenary who must now decide between two paths. Astrid can either follow the path of her unit or take hold of her own aspiration in service of her own glory. I will make it clear though that Astrid, the name of this supposed character, is probably the code name and not the actual name of her character. Apart from Ahsoka and Sabine's search for Ezra Bridger and Thrawn, we don't know much about the plot of the series. So how this mercenary character will play into the show is still a mystery. It's intriguing nonetheless that she seems to be at a crossroads and will need to make a life-altering decision. Could she be someone one also on the hunt for Thrawn, or maybe even a major figure in the Imperial Remnant. Now, they also break some massive news that after casting Sabine Wren and Ivana Sakno as Astrid, they're also now looking to cast Barris Offi, who we don't know what happened to her after the Clone Wars. Did she become a Sith Inquisitor? And where would she be now, 28 years later? In my mind, there's only one person who should play Barris Offi, Nalini Krishan, the original Barris Offi in Star Wars Attack of the Clones. Why not bring her back? She was absolutely excellent. And even though Barris Offi didn't have any speaking roles until the Clone Wars, Nalini Krishan is still the original Barris Offi. And to date, the only person who's played her in live action. So I would say bring her back. So with all of that said, my dear friends, 
That brings us to the end of this news update. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Are you looking forward to seeing Barasofi in live action when the Ahsoka series drops? Who do you think this Astrid person is? And what do you make of everything else we spoke about? The Big Boba Fett news, Lando and more. If you enjoyed this one, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're brand new and a huge welcome if you are, and if you're feeling generous, why not contribute to the channel by becoming a patron while also getting access to a library of additional videos and access to our Discord server. We would be honoured if you would join us. But otherwise, may the force be with you all. I'm Star Wars Meg and I'll see you in the next one.